Hey folks, this is Matt once again, and granted, not really a horror film, more of a kind of a horror action film. Not everyone's cup of tea, but I love this film to death. I grew up with this film, and that is Split Second. He's seen the future. Now he has to kill it. Um, really, I would say this is probably this is a DVD-R. I was going to say probably because I didn't want to admit that I don't, it's not the actual DVD, but the DVD for Split Second is so fucking expensive that I just had to settle for a DVD-R that I got like on IOF or something, because the actual DVD is so expensive, even then, I still think there hasn't been a great DVD release of this, because even widescreen format, even if it says widescreen, it's not really widescreen, it's like kind of widescreen. Uh, I really do wish this would be re-released on DVD or Blu-ray. Blu-ray. Remastered, actual widescreen format, but it'll never happen. But Split Second, yeah, it's not everybody's cup of tea, but I love this film to death. I just repeat it, I know. Uh, ever since I was a kid, uh, I've been watching this film, and each time, um, I will say one problem is... Uh, I think it could have a bump in the action sequences, you know, more action or more, uh, um, just more action sequences, especially the ending. Uh, but this is one of those films that it doesn't bother me as much because it's the characters I really enjoy, the idea, and I just become very entertained by this film. Now, Rudger Hauer, this is my favorite performance by Rudger Hauer great actor and the hitcher and blade runner but this is my favorite performance you know i liked him and wanted dare alive but i always loved this his character the most in this as harley stone and the film was directed by that is the same guy yeah the film came in 1992 unfortunately it came out around i think the the la riots and stuff so when this film came out uh it's directed by tony malum i guess the same guy who did the burning which is pretty cool. I know there's another guy who I just shot the action scene at the end. So who knows? Maybe that's why. I don't know. But I would like to hear bad stories behind this. But uh, it takes place, not the future anymore. I mean, the future here was 2008. But it was in 1992, the future. So the thing is, it's in the future, and it takes place in London. And because of global warming, the sea levels have risen. So that's why a lot of this film in London, it's uh, a lot of places are flooded. I thought that was a good idea because it made the environment of the film um, very interesting to look at. How everywhere these guys uh, went to, it was always uh, dark. Well, not dark, but it was dark, but it was wet and it was uh, rainy. Or if it was, uh, you know, the certain elements of being flooded areas of London. I thought it made a great setting for the flick. And uh, I really enjoy the characters. You have Rudger Hauer as Harley Stone. He's a cop who, he's very hyper, which is great to see Rudger Hauer as that. Uh, he's always having you know, coffee and chocolate and donuts. And, you know, it's like, coffee, where's my fucking coffee? <laughs> and uh, it's because long ago he had a partner. Who was killed by this thing that he's chasing and it fucked him up and left him this big deep uh, huge scar and ever since then he sort of had a maybe telepath is sort of hint with the killer and I always remember this poster too I don't know if you can see that that is fucking venom that should be venom right there that's what venom should have looked like that fucking Topher Grace's dumbass. That's fucking Venom. That's how I, I always thought of it. It's like, it's fucking Venom. <laughs> or hell, Prometheus, you know, like those guys in Prometheus instead of the bald albino fuckers? I thought they were gonna look like this guy. This uh, killer. Or fucking Venom. And that, I, that's why I love the look of it. It's like, it's all, you know, I don't know. I love the look of the killer. But, uh,. Ever since then, he has, he's has he been very obsessed with trying to find this thing. And uh, his partner's uh, wife, played by Kim Cattrall, who pretty much has the same haircut that she did after... I think this was after 
Star Trek VI. That's what it says in the trivia. Um, and, you know, he's sort of falling in love with her and vice versa. And, again, he's very hyper. He's very obsessive. Very paranoid. And he just put a new partner played by Neil Duncan. And Neil Duncan, he's going to do a couple stuff. Um, that new cartoon, The Batman, I think he's actually the voice of Alfred, the butler. And Neil Duncan, I really enjoy his character too, because at the beginning, when he's partnered over Roger Howard, he's kind of like a Weasley type of character, always by the book. But what's great is these two back and forth and how they become like, uh, I don't know if you want to call friends, but uh, how sort of Neil Duncan changes throughout the film to become more and more like how Roger Howard's character and their back and forth. I think it's a lot of fun. I think it's very entertaining with some great lines. Um, yeah, the stuff at the beginning where he's taught Roger Howard's talking to his uh, boss, and he's asking all the what kind of weapons do you have to Harley Stone, Roger Howard's character. And he's talking about how he has guns, and his boss goes, "Is that's not paranoid? I don't know what the fuck it is. Spice, you don't have a grenade launcher. <laughs> Couldn't get a pregnant. This isn't funny." <laughs> Uh, you just have to see the film to know what the hell I'm talking about. And uh, what this also, the, what this killer, this creature does, it, it rips people's hearts out. And you get some pretty good graphic uh, after the scene where you see women and you do see titties and you see women and other people who have their hearts ripped off. And there's actually a really cool scene where um, an, a heart is sent to the police. And they open it, a box. A box is sent to uh, Roger Howard and such at the police station. They open up and there's a fucking heart in there. Uh, like bit, like a heart that's bitten in. <laughs> thought that was really a nice touch. Um, but like Roger Howard and Neil Duncan. Like Neil Duncan talks about how he runs so much every morning. Has sex with his wife every night. And Roger Howard's busting his balls. Like yeah right. I don't believe that. <laughs> Uh, and you just the the chemistry between the two, I think, is spot on. I love the environment that they're in, and the and the creature they're looking for. I like the design of the film. You don't see it too much, which I think was the right choice because they didn't have the biggest budget. And I think you see just enough. And great, and I will say it's not wall to wall action. I think that's the thing people will have a problem with. It's not wall to wall action. There's not a lot of action truthfully is more of an investigation but to be honest I was so entertained by the characters and their back and forth and I like the idea where it's like this thing that it either is Satan or he thinks it's Satan and is trying to do this ritual uh, I was a little bit confused by it but I like the idea behind it I thought I like it wasn't just your typical genetic experiment gone awry or it was just a fucking alien from our space and it's kind of left to your own devices to where it comes from as well and I like that I actually preferred that you know I thought it made it a little bit different and again I like the look of it I like one scene where it uses a fucking shotgun trying to kill Rudyard Hauer I thought that was really fun <clears throat> um I just remember like the certain sequences where, for instance, uh, they realized that it didn't get the entire heart of one of its victims, and it's actually in the morgue. And I like the way they did the morgue and Roger Howard and Neil Dunn like going through the morgue, and I thought it was a really well uh, directed sequence with suspense. And you have like people sort of, I don't know how to explain how they do it. It's, I don't know if you call it the morgue or it was just the hospital wing, but. Uh, I don't know how to put it, how the, the bodies are like set up. And it has a good sense of humor, like Neil Duncan thinks it's behind here and looks and goes, What are you eating? It's just a guy eating a sandwich. He's like, Okay, how do I forget the character's name? Dick. Yeah, Dick Durkin. Yeah, Detective Dick Durkin. Like, come on, Durkin. And as they're going, they see blood, and blood's dripping down, and they look up, and holy shit, it's actually not on the ceiling, but it's on the level above them. And I thought it was a well-shot sequence. I thought it really developed the suspense well. 
but uh, it escapes. I guess uh, certain people have certain logic issues. Well, how the fuck is it that, you know, it'll go so fast that people can't find it? Well, that's why it's called split second. I mean, that's where the title split second comes from. It's not human. It's obviously not human. So, you know, that idea, that's why it's in the title, folks. That's, it's fast. Um... I'm trying to look up, see if there's any other info on the film because I don't, don't want to miss anything. But I've always been a fan of this film. I've always been a sucker for this movie. Highly entertained by the film. It is insane how expensive the DVDs are for this. I, I'll say it again. I do really truly wish that this film would be re-released on a Blu-ray format, remastered picture and stuff. I know like uh, somebody for like every... He likes the film, but he's not like a huge fan of the film, and that's fine. And I think Michael Keane, I think he said one time he saw this film once and he wasn't a fan of it. Um, that was a long time ago, but that's cool. But like, I love the relationship between these two. Like, when the creature escapes, like, that's when Neil Dunn is finally going to Roger Howard's side. like, wasn't a thing, it was a fucking it. You know, we need to get bigger guns. Big fucking guns, you know. And, like, basically now he's Roger Howard's character. Like, this Weasley partner has now gone to the other side, and he's just, you know, drinking coffee and throws in just the donuts. And Roger Howard, like, takes a cigar and gives it to him. He's like, now we're going to get bigger guns. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, you see Roger Howard's expression on his face as he walks. And, like, they're looking through the weapons, and Dick Dirk is like, too fucking small. <laughs> Yeah, and they're talking to, they're talking with each other, and the the boss comes by. It's like, what the hell are you doing? You know, what are you doing with all this? And it's like, you know, you try to tell me there's something around loose in the city, ripping out people's hearts and eat them, so you can take them souls back to hell. Looks that way. Hallelujah. And the boss, you both fucking nuts. What I'm supposed to put A B B on some asshole with a tail? Yeah, I knew. I guess he got fucking horse coming out of his head. Yeah, fuck yeah. You pair of bricks. <laughs> That's what I mean. Is I love Ken Control in this film. You guys actually did to see a little bit of da da da. And a little bit of shower suit with Ken Control. That's nice. I like her relationship with Roger Hauer. I, I love Roger Hauer's performance. Uh, like, there's another scene where uh, Dick Durkin thinks he sees something. And he shoots up the kitchen. He's like, I saw it. I saw a rat. Uh, so I shot it. Shot it? You shot my kitchen, that's what. But I missed the rat. What? This one? Cool. <laughs> that's what I mean. I love the back and forth. And then at the end, it's basically Kim Control has been kidnapped. And uh, Neil Duncan and uh, Roger Howard have to go face it. And sort of the subway system and sort of this, uh, I guess, abandoned metro car. And they have like these guns. And they don't use them enough, I will admit, but they use them a little bit. And it, I like, granted, the ending could have been, if maybe if they were given more budget, they could have done more spectacular stuff. Again, it's not much action, I will admit that, but I like the comeuppance, you know, Roger Howard rips the motherfucker's head off, not head, rips the fucker's heart out, sweet dreams, blows the fucking heart apart, um, no downbeat ending, um... I just, I really like the setup of the film. I like the environment of the film. I love the relationship between Neil Duncan and Roger Howard. I love their uh, performances in the flick. I got involved with their investigation. I like the ideas handled with the, the killer, this creature. Granted, you're not, it's not the typical, but I like that it wasn't just a typical alien or a typical, you know, I like that it sort of think for yourself, figure out for yourself. I was fine with that. Um, I thought I went at a fine pace. I never got bored. I know a lot of people get bored with this, but I'm I'm not one of them. I'm just thoroughly entertained by the film. Again, I will say one more time, it's not action pat. I will admit it could use a little bit more action, but um I I found it highly entertaining. And I thought I think it's my favorite Roger Howard performance and you know what can I say? We need bigger fucking guns! <laughs> I love that. So thanks for watching and sweet dreams.